Hey everybody, uh, so Keisha here again. Uh, we're live from Austin, Texas. Uh, we're at the Austin uh, API Summit organized by Nordic APIs. Uh, a lot of interesting folks, a lot of great speakers, and uh, I have one of the speakers over here, which is uh, Chris Chris Bussey over here uh, of API Vista. Hey, it's good to be here. Good, good to be, good to see yeah. you again, Chris. Uh, I'm enjoying the conference so yep, far. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so you're still the CTO of API Vista? Yes, yeah. We're going on about, coming up on two years here in August. We just moved into some bigger office space and got enough space to triple the team size. So That's pretty awesome. excited about the growth there. That yeah. is awesome. That yeah. is awesome. Uh, I mean, I, I know Chris since 2016. I think I first met you in uh, Glucon in 2016. I think it was API, API Strat? API Strat was 2017. Okay. And I was not at Glucon. You're not at Glucon? Hmm. Yeah. It must have been API Strat then, or, 2016 yeah. and 2017 yeah. for API Strat. So yeah. it's like I'm, I meet Chris every year. So yeah. this is like, I think he's my good luck charm as well. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Chris, how's the conference been so far? It's been really good. You know, um, I just flew in, so I missed some of the morning. But one of the things that I really appreciated from some of the sessions so far is this focus on API as a product. Mm. Because that is something that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, with the way I like to approach API design, both with my clients and in previous work and everything. Um, and it's really uh, validating to see this, I don't know if groundswell is the right word, but seeing more and more talk around that, more and more people being able to not just share the theory of treating APIs like a product, but being able to share their successes with yeah. treating APIs like a product. You know, it's one thing to say, this is how you should do it, but it's another thing to say, this is, we did it this way, we found success, here's what we learned. Yeah. Here's what you can apply, like now you can get there faster based on what we had to kind of maybe struggle through or maybe just you yeah. know, hit a home run on. I mean, that's personally something which I personally uh, enjoy in conferences. Yeah. You know, it's less of thought leadership and if it's more of like the actual yeah. practicality yes. of the approach and yeah. what actually worked because right. learning from use cases is the is the best yeah. way to learn right learning yeah. from failures learning from success yeah. stories so yeah i mean i felt that as well especially yeah. when people were talking about how they package different apis and you know sell them and make them work together yes. as a product yeah that is phenomenal yeah so uh, you know i know you're a big advocate of the contract first or the design oh, first yeah. approach as well yeah uh, can you speak to more of like how the design first thinking applies to like thinking of your, uh, the product approach of your APIs yeah as well? so i think it's key i think you know when, when it comes to the product approach of the API and design first, you got to keep in mind who you're designing for. Yeah. And I think, um, so I make a distinction. One thing I've learned over the past year, this kind of goes back to growing the team at API Vista, but as we've been recruiting a lot of developers, I've actually kind of classified API development into three categories when I'm talking to a developer, asking them about the work that they've done. And the first category is maybe somebody that's working full stacks, so maybe it's a mean stack, they're working up and down the stack. And those APIs that they're building are really for themselves, right? So maybe they can expose out to an Angular front end, or maybe it's a mobile front end, but then they're building the, the APIs. And so the developer that only works in that space may not have as much awareness of the concept of API product. And then kind of the next level up in that uh, progression, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. is the developer that's building APIs, and maybe they're not doing the user interface or the front end, mm -hmm. um, but the person they can swivel chair to or talk to right away can. So they you know, may not have had the need for the level of documentation that when we talk about APIs as a product, kind of go along with that. But then there's that third kind, right? That third kind is the person who is going to be using these APIs is external to me. Now that could be so far away in a big enterprise that I don't even know where they land in the org chart, or it could be a partner that ends up being a complete stranger. And so I think when we think of APIs as a product, um, people like to use the term APIs generally and say APIs should be a product. But I do think there's like a time and a place for that productization. And when you're talking about like, I'm building those APIs and they're going to be used by somebody external who's a stranger to me, that's when we really need to apply that product thinking. And then we need to think of that person as our customer. And then also that person's a developer, right? Uh, but then also have an awareness of who that developer's customer is. Uh, okay. And you know, a word that we've started to use with some of our clients who are publishing APIs out to their partners is this concept of co-creation, right? So we are co-creating something for your customer together. Mm -hmm. So not only do I need to understand how you're gonna be consuming my API product, 
but I want to know like what business value is it driving? What's the user experience case are you creating for your user? So I can also be thinking like what's the impact on my backend system for that? And that has to do with interface, but also a lot when it comes to performance and like the non-functional requirements of those APIs. Even just knowing about that end consumer's business cycles, like are they going to see seasonality in their business cycle? Are they going to see spikes in traffic? Um, really comes and, and helps you think of every facet that you need, not only for the things you're delivering, but the capabilities that the API needs to expose across the board there. Got it. I think, uh, I mean, you brought up an interesting point, which is like API, pro thinking of APIs as products is, is great, yeah. but it's not necessarily the case for every single use case, right? Right. I mean, it's, it's the product thinking for APIs takes a lot of effort, right? right? And you want to maximize the impact of yes. that thinking. Yes. And so having it when it's like external facing, right. that's like the perfect use case yeah. for it because one, there's like, your company's reputation is on the line. Right? Because <laughs> That's very true. Excel yes. focused, focused APIs. Yeah. But two, they're going to actually maximize their, uh, the, the yes. value obtained from your APIs yes. as well when you actually give them a consistent developer experience. Yep. So I think that was like um, that was a, um, a pretty interesting way of looking at it. And it also yeah. like gives me a good uh, a framework of thought, you know, on right. like applying the product yeah. uh, Cause, thinking. Because for something to have a product, you have to have a customer. And if yeah. you're building for yourself, yeah, you're your own customer. Maybe you need to make some notes about what you did, why you did it. But you're not out there with a customer. And so I think we, we, we as, as excited as I get about APIs, I always, and APIs as a product, I always want to remember there's, there's you want to spend the effort where it's going to have the most value. Got there. it. I mean, you, I think you touched on this a little bit as well, but uh, with the whole contract first thinking, you know, yeah. and especially the design with the, the product approach, right. you know, um, it's it's easier said than done. Like contract yes. first thinking is is amazing on paper, yeah. but companies face real hurdles when it comes right. to actual implementation of the process. Yeah. So in your from your past experience, what do you think some of the biggest challenges are when implementing contract? Yeah, first? so I've had it, you know, definitely in the time I've been at API Vista, we've had one client where it worked just really amazingly well. Um, and that was where, you know, there's maybe already a pre-existing relationship between some of the teams. They were very aligned on the business goals. It wasn't seen as like, well, I have to build the back end and you have to build the front end. And oh my gosh, it's so hard to do this data. Oh, oh my gosh, it's so hard to get the buttons in the right place. Yeah. Where it's like, woe is me. My thing is more important than your thing. No, it was like, we are all aligned on this North Star. So not only was there a shared API contract that the user interface team and the middleware team or the API team were building off of, there was this shared North Star goal that they recognized as a business, they were both working toward the same goal. And so I think, um, you know, to, to put that in the contrary there, it's, it's where I think people maybe are a little too siloed or a little, not lifting up and understanding that, you know, there are organizations out there where success is, is backlog story completion. Yeah. Um, and it's really getting your head up from some of the day-to-day -day work and remembering that, you know, success is delivering business value and customer value there. And I think then when people are truly aligned around that and they see that contract first, approach as being a tool to help enable that and enable the coordination and enable an increased quality product uh, that you see the success yeah. in that approach. And I think, I mean, at the end of the day, businesses will adopt any sort of strategy as long yeah. as they see past examples where it's actually worked, Yeah. right? So, you know, like I know you talked about uh, an example like this in the past and yeah. I think an API strat or a customer of yours, actually a client of yours actually yeah. implemented this and found yes. real, real Yeah, that was what I was thinking value, of there, yeah. Right? And those yeah. those examples actually help spread the awareness of yeah. like this this amazing yeah. concept of like thinking of design as yeah. the fundamental Especially, yeah, and I think, and, and you know, I think there's, there's, the, there's the contract first, which I, I I think is what a lot of what we talk about here, the API first, the contract first. And in that example, what it was, it was it was the parallel development mm -hmm. with user interface happening against mocked APIs at the same time that the back end was being built and there was a lot of trust between the teams that they would come together at the end and have it right. Yep. Um, you know, there's definitely more successes when people do go and understand the customer and then build the whole thing out in kind of an MVP capacity. Um, I think that's a more common use case that you see out there from an API publishing perspective. Got it. Yeah. Well, this has been great, Chris. Thank yeah, you so much for coming, yeah. coming yeah. in. Thanks for the opportunity up. to hop on camera oh, and oh, chat. Of about course, this. I know. I'm, I'm pretty sure all of our viewers will have like will learn a lot from yeah. this conversation. Yeah. So, anyways, thank you so much. Right. I'm looking forward to running into you in other conferences as well. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Out. All right. <laughs> thank you.